What's up, YouTubers? Today we're bringing a deck profile on the Ritual Luar deck. Uh, this is a new Shadow Pattern based on Ritual. So let's get on the starter. For Study Vanguard, we have the one from the Char deck. Uh, I don't know the name, but skill is GB1, Counterblast 1. When this is retired by one of your uh, skill, you could put it into the soul and choose one of your unit. Then that unit gains 5k. The good part about this card is that it goes back into the soul, which is good. Because this deck really needs soul. So that's the only good part and early game is a 5k booster which not bad. Then moving on to grade threes we have four drag card Luar. Uh Luar's the main card of the deck and it's the only grade three I run in this deck because I feel like any other grade three doesn't work well with this, so that's how I run. I seen people running with Diablo, but even though people are running with Diablo, they Try to stay on Luar as well, so I feel like what's the point running it then? And it take up a four slot for the deck. So I figure why not just take it out and run more grade one or grade two. Since this deck is based on grade one, so I did run more grade one than a uh, normal ratio deck. And with only four Luar, it's good. I mean you don't re you don't need grade three for shy since its first strike its first skill is a ritual three, no more GB2. And at the beginning of your ride phase, you could choose two car from your two normal unit car from your drop zone and return them to the bottom deck. Then you, for this turn, you could shy without paying the cost. So you don't need to waste any car from your hand to shy, which that's why you don't need more grade three. Second skill is uh, on shy. Whenever you shy, you can us one. Choose one of your unit to retire, and then and then search up your deck for two grade one or lower. Uh, unit and call them to the rear guard circle. So you could combo these two unit with combo these two skills, which uh choose two grade one to return to the bottom deck. Then with the shy cannabis one to call them back out. Since you cycle your grade one, you need your grade one to be cycled. That's why uh with the skill it actually works well. Then moving on to grade two, we have four Mofesa. Uh. I would say Mofesa is the uh, best grade 2 in this deck since it could be a attacker and it could also be a, a ritual as in drop zone for you to have uh, for the condition. Since ritual needs 3 grade 1 and her last effect is in the drop zone was GB1. Uh, this card's grade is minus 1 which is a grade 1. It's a ritual 1 for, his, for your skill and you all you need is some other grade 1s, at least 2. Uh, to me, the ritual re requirement. First skill is GB1 with ritual 3 when this card attacks. Uh, when this card attacks a Vanguard, and uh, you could have it gain plus 5. It will gain plus 5. And if its attack hits, you could counter boss 1, search up your deck for a green 1, and call it to R. Call it to rear guard. So, which is pretty good. It's attacker and help you set up your board as well if it attack actually hit. But most of the time, it's going to be in the drop zone. Uh, so that you could have uh a ritual then moving on we play three of the old card this card is a gb1 which uh whenever a, a grade with whenever a card was grade less than this unit called to the rear guard circle uh this unit gains 3k so when this is on the board and you have a you and you shy by calling two grade one it, that's a 6k power to this unit so it's a 15 on its own which if you call 3 plus 12, which that give it 21 by itself, which is pretty good. It's a powerhouse of the deck since you use this. This has a huge power, but you hardly use it since when this is on the board. Your opponent try to kill it and at this time you have it in your hand and you do your skill before calling. So you're not really going to get it, but having it is good as long as you have it on the board. Then moving on, we play two of the Trial Deck Grade 2. I uh, only play two because it's cost a soul and the only good part is a 11k attacker. That's it. And it's a ritual 3 in order to be a 11k attack ca attacker. First skill is Soul Bus 1. A GB1 once per turn, you could Soul Bus 1. Choose a unit in the same column as this unit, retire it, and then draw a card. It's like Soul Breaker. It's the only difference that Soul Breaker call from the deck, which you could combo it with a skill, so you could call it out and then so fast one draw a card. This need to be on the 
this doesn't have to be called from the deck, which is better, but most of the time your whole board is going to be filled with grade 1, so I feel like grade 2, these are not needed. If you don't want to run this, you could run something else, but I feel like 11k attackers still good, and if you run out of a sword breaker, and you need card to draw, this is actually pretty good as well, so that's why I run 2. Then moving on, we'll play 2 Nelen. Uh, I don't play the 7k one, that GB one. It does the same thing as Nelen, but you want to have the skill early game, other than a GB one, which is kind of mid game or late game. So early game, you could have this, and then it helps you to thin out your deck to get grade 3 faster. Since you draw 2, there's a chance you will get it, and also, it helps you to set up your ritual early game as well. You could discard a great one or Mephesa, uh to the drop zone to draw two. That's why it's good. Uh, and you could retire with a strike skill since it, do it doesn't say to retire a great one or lower. It says retire any unit. So you could retire Nelen to call two great one, which is pretty good. Then moving on for great one, we play for the new PG. Uh, it's really good because. With this PG, you could have infinite PG in your hand, like, not infinite PG in your hand, but like, you could have more than four that this way, since every single time you have two in the drop zone, and you met Ritual, you could return one of them to the bottom deck by retiring one card on your field and then return the other one to your hand, so you will always have a perfect guard, and what's good about that, let's say you only have, let's pretend uh, you only have three grade one in the drop zone, uh, Ritual condition met, you could use a skill, uh, which as long as you ha you met the condition, you can activate the skill. So even if you only have three card in the drop zone, three green one, you could still return, uh, choose, use one of the skill and then choose one to the bottom deck by retiring one and bounce it back to your hand. Even though when it activates, after it activates, uh, by retire by retiring one and bounce one, you don't have ritual. The conditions met, uh, when the time you activate the skill, so it allows you to use it. Same thing as uh, Luard. Let's say uh, you are, it's your turn to try. You go first, you ride this, your turn to try. You only have three grade one in the drop zone. Mofesa doesn't count that time since you don't have a GB. Uh, you could just return two grade one. You activate the, you have, you met the condition of ritual first, so you could activate the skill, which that's why it's good. Then moving on, we play. For Abyssal Owl, uh, Abyssal Owl was really good in this deck because it's a Luar Searcher. When it plays on rare, you can look at top seven and then search for a card with Luar in its name and add it to your hand. Then you could discard up to the number of gray equal to three or more. So you could discard three gray one that give you ritual condition right away, or you could discard a gray one and a gray two, and that kind of give you a uh, ritual if you discard Mafesa. So it's good as well. Second ability is also good because it's a counter charge ability. It's whenever uh, you retire with one of your skill, you could, and if you have Luar Heart, you could counter charge one, which in this build, you guarantee have it since that's only grade three you run. And let's say you you return a PG, use a PG skill to re, uh, retire, return one by adding itself to the hand, you need to retire a unit. You could retire Abyssal Owl. This way you could get a free counter charge. Or if Abyssal Owl is on the board early game, you could use a strike skill to counter boss one, sack Abyssal Owl, call two, then triggers Abyssal Owl skill, counter charge. So it makes the uh, strike skill free, which is also good. Then we play for the other Chow deck card. Uh, it's a 9k attacker or a booster when called from the deck with Ritual 3. Second ability is GB1. At the end of the battle that this unit boosts, uh, uh, in the same column, uh, and then you could at the end of that battle, you could just counter boss one, uh, choose a car in the front, retire it, and then you draw a car. So you could combo it like this. Let's say you use a strike skill to call these two. Uh, it's a 16 column after attacks. Uh, you could use a counter boss one, retire abyssal owl, draw a car, abyssal owl skill triggers. Uh, counter charge make this skill free as well so it's a free draw as well with uh paying any cost and then give you great one to the drop zone which you could just return it again and then call it back out then we'll play two witch of nostril 
uh, Nashom, uh, because this is really good. By resting, resting yourself, you could discard one, draw one. Uh, it helps you to draw so that you get your grade three, and it helps you to set up your ritual condition early game as well. Since this deck, uh, I play more grid one since I take out the grade three spot for it. So this way, you discard grade one to help you to set up a uh, ritual. Then we will play two sword breaker. Uh, originally I was only really running one, but I found out that. If you lose it, you couldn't use it anymore. Even though this deck costs really heavy soul, I, I by playing it, one soul blast is actually uh, manageable. Since with draw trigger, you could soul charge. So having two just to have the consistency so that you could call it out, call one of them out and soul blast one to draw a card. Uh, other than that, you could just, if you have this in your hand early game, you could just use witch to discard it. Either witch is fine. And you could call it to attack and then let it die since uh, also like let it die and then help you to set up ritual but with this deck your opponent hardly attack your green one since was there's no point since they're gonna you call green one anyway. Uh other than that you could use G Guardian to move it to the Guardian Circle as well. Then for the last grade two grade one we play it's a Shider. <laughs> I play two, uh only two, because I don't see the point to run more since with Noir skill, you don't need to shy. Use card in your hand to shy. So two is just that if you actually go second, uh, you ride. When you ride, you couldn't have uh Luar skill because Luar skill is beginning the right phase. Which when you ride, it's already not beginning the right phase. So then you need a shy water or discard grade two and grade one. This is just to add a consistency to if you're going second. And other than that. Two is good enough. I, I don't think it's needed. Uh, then moving on to triggers, we play a crit. Uh, there's no Luar crit right now, so just a regular crit is fine. I mean, you could play other crit, but Hollow will be good. Then for draw trigger, uh, for Owl because you want to have the soul charge ability so it gave you more soul that's other than that there's no need i mean if you want to play 12 crit you could but you do need a soul charge that's why you play four and what's good about it is that you could call it out with luar's uh shy skill so you could just do a free soul charge and give you a soul then for heal trigger g guard nothing else and moving on to the g zone we have four luar Luar is a ritual as well, which is Sobas 1. Uh, choose a card from your G zone and flip it face up. For each face up Luar you have in your G zone, you could superior call a grade 1. And then those grade 1 gains a thousand for each grade 1 in the drop zone. So the first time you it's, you don't need GB as well, so you could go for this first, which give you a free grade 1. And that grade 1 gains a thousand for each in the drop zone. But if you go for this first, you're not going to have a lot of grade 1 in the drop zone. Plus, sometimes you don't have ritual since... Um, let's say you only have 3 or 4, you use Luar's ability, and then you only have 2 left. Then, if you go for this, you're not really going to have grade 1. So, you, don't, you can't activate ritual. That's why you usually go for the second... And the second time you go for, you could superior call three unit, which most of the time, usually I call three of this on the back. And they are 9k on its own, with Morfessa and all the other green ones dropped on already. They gain more power, and you hit for more num a bigger number, which is good. Then moving on, we play one Orgeyser, Doom, and one original Orgeyser. Uh... I like raging from deck. I didn't play two or guys because uh this deck doesn't counterbalance that heavy since you have a best of free counter charge every single time. But it's heavy on the soul. That's why I play Doom instead of original War Geyser. This way you don't need to you don't need the soul blast. And you could clear your opponent's board. But I hardly I hardly go to this since we have the one from the trial deck. So it guarantees retire two of your opponent's unit, and if your opponent doesn't retire two, let's say they only have one, they retire that one, and you give your front row four k each, three unit four k each, or you could give all four k to one unit. Uh, the, the good part of this card is that 
the good part about this deck actually, there's no GB2 on it. So GB1 is actually good when you strike this first. And you could just retire Abyss Owl or whatever you call from the strike skill. And then since I mean since it's free, I usually what I do is strike this. Uh then use the uh skill to retire Abyss Owl. This way your strike skill will be free and you kill two of your opponent's rear guard and your front row gains four. Then moving on, we'll play one, uh, Special Diablo. Special Diablo is really good in this deck because if you actually G guard first, uh, the first try you could go for is actually Diablo. Even though it costs a soul, that's why I say the soul is really heavy since Luar itself needs soul, Diablo needs soul, Swordbreaker needs soul, most of the stuff needs soul, and you only have three soul and uh, total with grade zero, grade one, grade two, unless you do the draw trigger. That's why Soul is really heavy on this deck. One's good enough. Uh, you only need it once anyway. Then moving on, we'll play two Diablo. Uh, still good. I mean, 36 with a crit, no guard from hand. It's really good. And if you have three Owl, by sacking three, you counter charge three, which is good as well. Then we'll play one Seabreeze. I mean, this deck is a GB deck uh, in the end, since... Uh, this, Mephesa, and these, most of the units do have GB as well, so if your opponent decide to stall you, you could go for Seabreeze. And you could just discard a Grey One to help you set up Ritual as well. Then moving on to G-Guardian, we'll play 3, Plotmaker. Plotmaker's good, I mean, you fill up your drop zone with Grey One fast, so Ritual condition met really easily. So that's why uh, a 25k shield is really easy to do. And then we play one of the fighter collection one. I play one because early game, if you have Swordbreaker in your hand, you call it out. Uh, then you could use G-Guard to guard and move Swordbreaker or any grade one that you want to the Guardian Circle to help you fill up your ritual condition. Uh, other than that, that's basically it. And this is the deck list and I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys next deck profile.